What's up, YouTube? I'm here doing my recap for Henderson vs. Batch. Let's start at the bottom. Um, James Wintasri vs. Cody Pittsburgh. Not much to talk about. I knew it was going to be one-sided, and it was. James Wintasri, you know, he, he looks like the better prospect, and he just whooped at this guy's ass. I mean, <laughs> it was. It was a one-sided ass whooping. Next was um, Zach Makowski vs. Tim Elliott. And this was the fight that I thought was going to be the fight of the night, and I thought it was up until the main event. You know, but like I said in my prediction video, I thought the difference was the wrestling, and I thought, you know, Zach Makovsky was able to control, you know, the first round I thought was close until he got the Mount Crucifix and was able to land the ground and pound, and then the second round I thought was close too, but I thought but if there was any round I would give to Tim Elliott, it was that one, and then the third, um, you know, Zach Makovsky caught Tim Elliott's back for the majority of that round, and I thought he won that round, so I had it two to one. But I like some of the things Zach Murkowski did during the fight. Like, I like that he put himself in the half guard and got that sweep on Tim Elliott. You know, like when Tim Elliott was going for that guillotine in the third, he kicked out his pivoting leg. Um, and I thought that was some high-level stuff. I think Zach Murkowski is one of the most entertaining guys at flyweight. I definitely think with this win, it puts him back into the top eight. So I'm glad to see that. I hope to see him again. Next was Chase Skelly versus Jim Alters. And this fight was basically two guys who weren't great strikers, who didn't want to go to the ground against each other, but Chase Elliott was the much better striker, and every time he would hurt Jim Alters, he would shoot for a takedown, and I had no idea why, when he was just such the better striker, and eventually he stopped trying to shoot for takedowns, and was just letting his hands go, and he knocked him out. This fight was pretty good, up, but the only thing that was kind of making it shitty was that, was that he just wasn't using his hands. But it was a good one for Chase Skelly. I know there was some controversy about the knee. I think that he was just throwing the knee as the guy was falling. And if you see it, the guy was done. You know what I mean? He he was pretty much out, down and out. He was getting hit with shots to the body, and he was basically falling over because he didn't want to get hit anymore. Next was Everton Escadero versus Rodrigo de Lima. And this fight was like the Chase Skelly fight. It was really one-sided in terms of the striking. The grappling was kind of close, but eventually Escadero... The difference was Escadero would get the takedowns, unlike Chase Skelly who couldn't. And then he would just, you know, get ground and pound, but, you know, not much to say about this fight. It was a good one for Escadero, though. Next was Ray Borg versus Chris Calades, and this is just a super one-sided grappling fight. It was an entertaining grappling fight, but there was no point where Ray Borg wasn't dominating. And then, in the third, he caught a Kimura from half guard, so good one for Ray Borg. Um, you know... A lot of people said that they thought he won that fight with Dustin Ortiz. I don't think he did. I didn't think that fight was that close. I thought Dustin clearly won that one. But I think Ray Borg, with these last two wins, has shown that he is a top 15 guy. And I would love to see him fight a top 15 guy next. Not Dustin, because Dustin will just win again. Next was Kevin Lee versus Michael Pizarres. And this was exactly what I thought. This fight was boring, but Michael Kevin Lee was just the much better wrestler. And that's what happened for the three rounds was his wrestling was better. And he was able to, you know, their striking was pretty close, but I thought Kevin Lee was a little better. But the main thing was his wrestling. Next was Daniel Kelly versus Patrick Walsh. And this fight was basically two guys who aren't great strikers, but Daniel Kelly was able to throw crisp one-twos, and Patrick Walsh was just trying to wing big hooks. And in my opinion, I thought Daniel Kelly won every round. And I'm going to say this. If you miss weight, I feel like if you don't finish the fight... No matter how down it the round is, you you should. I think they should just make that rule. You lose the round because, like I said last week, when Tyron Woodley won, I thought he lost, but they gave him the win. And when Ian McCall lost, I thought that fight was close. I thought it could go either way, but they gave John Lineker the other two rounds. I'm just saying this. I feel like if you miss weight and by that much, where you're not even in the same weight class, because Patrick Walsh weighed in at like 190 something, and the weight class is in the 80s. You should lose every round, unless you finish the fight. That should be a rule from now on, from this point going forward, you know what I mean? That way, I don't need to talk about it anymore. It should just be a rule. If you don't finish the fight, and you miss weight by that much, you just lose every round. And then, there's no bitching and moaning later. From me and everybody else, you know, I, I know that I do it, but I'm pretty sure there are other people that do it too. And I'm just saying, if they make that rule from now on, it'll make fighters not want to miss weight anymore. And it'll be a good rule to have, because then when guys go into that fight, they know they need to finish, or, or that's it. They lose. No matter how, They win every round 10-8, they lose. That's how it should be. You miss, that's, your, that's their main job, is to make weight. Next is Neil, was Neil Magny versus Kichi Kunimoto. And I thought the first two rounds were pretty close, but then 
home the third. I think Kichu was gassed, and Neil took his back really early and got the Renee get choke. Next was Max Holloway versus Cole Miller, and um, I thought Max, you know, he looked really good. I just don't think he was able to find the range good enough to land the devastating strikes, which is why it went to decision. But I still think he looked better than Cole. And, you know, the headbutts that happened. I think both the headbutts, if you look, like Cole had his arm wrapped around Max's head and was, like, pulling him in. So, you know, he did land those headbutts, but I don't think it was on purpose. I think it was just one of those heat of the moment things. And I don't think it was either guy's fault. I think, you know, Cole was just reaching out to go for the tie plump, and Max was just moving forward. And it was just one of those momentum things. Now the main event. Ben Henderson versus Brandon Thatch. I thought this fight was probably the best fight Ben Henderson's had since his fight against Cerrone. Um, the first one, not the second one. Um, and, you know, I thought it was, like I said, this is one of the most exciting fights he's had in a long time. I don't think he should stay at welterweight, though. I think he's too small. But, nonetheless, it's a good win. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, please like and subscribe. I'm going to put my prediction video up for Mirror vs. Bigfoot in a little bit. So, thank you, guys.